Okay, Pate, let's uh, start. Right, uh, last day uh, we were discussing about so different morphological features and different kind of morphological features related to the plants. And we just discussed about the root system and different stems. Then we discuss about uh, different kind of uh, leaves. And today also we need to continue, continue our lesson. So we need to discuss about the leaves as well as uh, we have to discuss. Um, other than the leaves, we have to discuss a little about flowers, right? Because this is about the flowering plants. So let's move to the uh, lesson without taking uh, much of the time. Let's move to the lesson. So if you have questions, meanwhile, you can ask from me. Uh, any questions that you need to ask, you can ask. Okay, uh, then, uh, so actually this part we have discussed, but let's uh, let's uh, move for, let's just uh, like revise the things that we have learned. Uh, leaf is like uh, playing a vital role in plant growth because that is the factory where the food is mainly produced through photosynthesis, right? Photosynthesis is uh, basically the mechanism of uh, flowering or non-flowering plant, which is basically used for producing its own food. So that is why plants are called autotrophs. So they are not depending on the others. They are they can create their own food uh, using this photosynthesis process. And leaf has a special color due to that. It is green color. The reason is basically it uses a color called chlorophyll. It uses chlorophyll and this chlorophyll is used to absorb chlorophyll is used to absorb sunlight and also it absorbs carbon dioxide through the environment or atmosphere and also water from the root system. These are the ingredients. And when sunlight is present, the food is produced inside the leaf. Actually, to absorb uh, oxygen, sorry, absorb carbon dioxide, osmosis, as well as a diffusion can be used because uh, the stomatas that small holes in the leaf will allow that two processes. So those are the things happening in the leaf. Okay, then, <clears throat> so that is the basic thing about the plants. The one of the main tasks of the plant leaf is photosynthesis. Please remember that. That is the primary duty of the plant leaf. And there are some uh, other duties, but uh, the primary duty is like significant because without this duty, the plant cannot survive. So one of the main or very first things that plant we can see in the plant is leaves, because once it can it come out from the seed. So seed has some storage, so the food storage. Seed is a kind of food storage in the basic process, right? In the initial process. Seed will give the give food to the plant because the root need to be set up and all. But after that, it start its own photosynthesis uh, process and start producing the food. And these are the parts of a leaf, a typical leaf. But so these this is they are in so not in every leaf because so we learned that leaves are having different venations, parallel venation, reticular venation. So leaf are, leaves are having different venations, but so these uh, need to remember these things. And uh, the first thing is petiole where the leaf is uh, connected to the stem or branches. Then the veins, these veins, uh, we saw what is inside the veins. Can you remember one of the main things, one of the main, one of the like, uh, so some of the main things inside the vein. Yes. One of the main already at the end. We just learned that. Yes. Hello, I'm talking to you. Can you remember them? There are some components inside this vein. 
Okay, in case if you cannot remember, that is xylems and phloems. Xylems, xylem tissue and phloem. So what, what are they? Xylem, phloem. What's the task of xylem? What is the task of phloem? Hello, guys, I'm talking to you. Yes, sir. Sir, so we didn't learn that. Oh, we learned that in uh, the previous way, I guess. Xylems and phloems. No? Okay, okay, okay. Let me. So, how this uh, actually. No. So, because I. Okay, I think the lesson is because in this lesson we have not, not learned. That is true. In this lesson we have not learned about that. Because, anyway, uh, how. Like the water absorbed through these roots are transported through the xylems. Water absorbed through these roots are transported using xylems. Okay, the food, right, food which is created in the leaves are transported to other parts of the plant using phloems. Okay, in case if you cannot remember, those are the two things inside the leaf. Okay, let me show that, uh, maybe to give you an idea, a better idea, let me show that. Maybe like, uh, so you cannot remember, because we have not discussed that in this part of the lesson. That is why I agree with that. Mm, okay, let's see them. Okay, so here these are the xylems and phloems. Basically, in a plant here inside a vein, inside a vein. So if you divide or sub, if you like uh, see the cut of a vein, and here also in this vein, can you see this is a leaf? Inside the leaf, this uh, you can see this blue color and blue color and uh, pink color thing is basically xylem and phloem that is there in each and every vein, right? This is actually a part of Okay, then uh, in the stem also, okay, in the stem also, in the stem and the branches also, if you cut it, right, you can see these xylems and phloems. So this is stem, right, internal stem structure. Can you see the xylems and phloem? But you cannot see them as venation, right? You cannot see them as venation. Eva veins with your pain in it. Because it is inside the stem. Ne? But in the leaf, you can see them. Leaf again, you pain, right? Xylems and phloem. So what xylem transport? Yes. Xylem transports. And now tell me, now you know. Xylem transport water and minerals, right? Phloem transports. Water and food. Yes, water and food. Okay, here, can you see? Water and mineral is perhaps transported in xylems, phloems transport water and food, right? So basically the food transportation happens in phloem. Please write down somewhere because it's not there in the book that part. So that is what visible as a venation, right? That is what visible as the venation because you should know what is inside that. If you cut that vein, so that will be watery. So cut a leaf and see, cut a leaf and see, then you can see this through this veins, the watery or watery solution is please coming out. That is this uh, food and that is xylems and phloems. So xylem transport water and minerals, whereas the phloem transport, actually phloem transport bi-directionally, right? Xylem transport only upward because xylem goes from the roots to leaf, no? Roots to leaves. So it is transport, it is transport in water this way. But phloem, it's transport in both ways, right? You just remember the name, xylems and phloems. Let's move to the note again. Okay, the, now uh, 
so we were just discussing about what are the okay veins veins are basically made up made of xylems and phloems inside them so there are some other components also and the midrib midrib is like uh, it's a it's a main vein midrib is the main vein right basically petiole uh, is extended as the midrib that is the main vein and then you have uh, Veinlets. Veinlets are uh, so basically the sub veins. Midrib is the main vein, the veinlets are the sub -vein. Then the leaf margin and leaf blade. Leaf blade is basically the surface. <laughs> there are two sides upside and the downside, top and the bottom. So those are that is leaf blade, right? The surface. Leaf tip is the corner. So even leaves can be categorized based on the tip shape, based on the venation pattern. So because I have done this in my master's research. So there are a lot of categorizations, but up here we are not going to learn. Just remember the parts of uh, parts of leaf that is enough. So petiole is here, the leaf tip is here. Uh, this is leaf base. Base is basically where the uh, leaf uh, blade is connected to the petiole. So that is called the leaf. Base. Based on the base shape also, there are different different plants, the shape will be varied. Okay, is there anything that I need to discuss here or anything that uh, you need to know from me? Please ask, right? If you want something, please ask, then I can explain. Hello? I'm telling you. Okay, okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Leaf venation. So this we discussed. There are reticulate venation patterns and the parallel venation. Basically, parallel venation you can see where this uh, the root system is. So grass, bamboo, coconut, aricanut. What is the root system? Uh, I cannot remember that we discussed, right? Don't tell that we have not discussed. Grass, bamboo, coconut, aricanut. Yes. That fruit. That fruit. I believe. Huh? What kind of fruits are there? Fiber roots. Fiber roots. Fiber roots. Then uh, shoe flower, mango, jack, go to color. So, uh, but what you can see there? Mango, jack, fruit, and all. What's that the root system? When you see this image, you should be able to remember. There is a main root and there are some sub roots. So uh, what is that? That is called the tap root system, right? Tap root system, and this is this one is fiber root system, right? This panoral venation is mostly present in the fiber root plants, and the tap root system is mainly in this reticulate venation. You can see in the tap root plants. Okay. Clear on this or not? Not clear. That is the arrangement of veins, right? Just arrangement of veins. Veins and the vein lens. Not just the vein, veins and the vein lens. Clear or not clear? Hello, guys, you need to talk. I feel sleepy. So what has happened to you? You guys are, like, when you were in grade 6, you were talking very well. So what's happening when you're drawing? The mouth is, like, this adapted to not to talk, right? It seems. That is not a feature of growth. We have not learned such thing in uh, science. Is it a new feature? No, sir. Right? So don't know because, you know, uh, the things are happening uh, like nowadays. You cannot believe you know, because of the evolution. Maybe the new generation or the research generation evolved has this feature. Right? So then uh, talk. Come on. You have to talk. Right, okay. Then, actually, this is how the venation, venations and this leaf blade, blade uh, uh, surface can be printed. You can just paint over it or just put some uh, pastel or something. And then you can just seal it into a paper. Right, apply some paint. Yes. My voice is lagging. Cannot be. No, sir, it's clear. Yes, sir. Oh. Maybe your connection, you had to check. 
side you have to check your connection because like it cannot be because I'm I'm using fiber connection and it's okay. Because if, if there's issue, it will be indicated to me, right? Please check your connection. Okay. Apply paint over the plant surface and then you can seal. And this is one method. Another method is you can put this into water and boil, right? That is another method to see the venation pattern. Put this into water and boil it. And that will remove some amount of chlorophyll. boil chlorophyll tick up kind when you know, right? Some amount of chlorophylls will be removed. Then you can put this into a, uh, like uh, you can put this into alcohol container and put it in water and burn it again. Boil it again, then the remaining uh, chlorophyll will also be removed. That is how you are removing the chlorophyll part from a leaf. Isala vatrata dal ratkaran, it was alcohol dala. Alcohol will be removed. Don't directly burn the alcohol because it can like uh, it can be explosive sometimes. Therefore, you have to put it in a water container and boil it. Normal alcohol is not explosive, but there if there is methyl alcohol, methanol, then uh, it's burn. It's it can uh, create fire. That is. Ethanol is somewhat okay, but ethanol will be like uh, ethanol will convert will be converted to methanol sometimes. So can we use sanitizer? Sanitizer also burning. <laughs> right. If you put it to fire, what will happen? Haven't you tested that? So don't test it. <laughs> anyway, you can test if you want, uh, but uh, be careful, right? So that because that is also having uh, isopropyl or ethanol methanol. Uh, sometimes isopropyl, sometimes methanol, so it can also burn. Can make fire, so uh, that is uh, like you can you uh, you cannot see the flame here. It is light blue color flame or no color flame, here, but the like temperature is very high because it's complete burn. It's not an incomplete burn; it's a complete. And sanitizer is also burn. If you test it, so be careful in that, with that. But you have to put it in in a, in a water container and do that. Then the chlorophyll will be removed. Let's see where it uh, is a. Video, I can remember there was one. But this part is not there actually. So, okay. This is not there in the book. In the book, the other one is there. Actually, I don't need to extract the chlorophyll. Remove chlorophyll uh, is needed, right? This is uh, showing the exact in chlorophyll. Just want to see the venation. There is an alcohol. Uh, they are keeping it for a few hours. Without boiling, boiling will like uh, speed up the process. You yeah, have just put it in it for a few hours and you can see it for a few is removed.
you can dry these leaves and you can see the so if boy, better if you can boil and dry this, then you can see the venation clearly. This is actually to remove the chlorophyll from the leaf using alcohol. But that can also be used. Okay, then uh, we just discussed about the simple and compound leaves uh, last day. The simple leaves basically, so you can see uh, it's uh, the base. Base is connected to the petiole. The base is connected to the petiole like this. And the leaf, you cannot see any leaflet. Le leaflets are there, even leaflets like things are there, but it is not separated. It's there as a single unit. So then we call it's a simple. But in compound leaves, so there are leaflets. These leaflets are individual. These are separated, unlike this. This is connected. But this one is separated. So you can see in the coconut, turmeric, and uh, so even this uh, mimosa, lot of plants, you can see this uh, compound leaves. But simple leaves, shoot flower, jack, papo. So you can see the simple leaves. And then uh, another function of leaf is, this is, uh, you can see this is Akapana. So it can give birth to a new plant, to the leaves. It's amazing, right? Basically, we, we won't think like that. A leaf can give birth to another plant. But this plant is adapted in a such a way where the leaf can give birth to another plant. It can be propagated. Propagated. Right? So that is uh, basically begonia and acapana, these features there. And some, some of the leaves, right, some of the leaves store water because they are in, right, they are in some uh, extreme environment. They are adapted to be in some extreme environment. That is the reason why, so they store a lot of water there. Right. Then, so not just this. So there, are, and you can see there are small like uh, this. Uh, this is adapted to store water. Not only that, you can see some uh, like uh, pins like thing in this leaf in the cone. That is another special thing. And uh, so this is another adaptation: store water and also the propagation. Propagation means bringing new plants, reproduction. So this is actually vegetative reproduction. What is that vegetative reproduction is in single? Right, vegetative reproductions. That is called in uh, Singhala, we call Vardhaka Prachar. Vardhaka Prachar. So this can be like, it, it's used propagation. So it's basically producing new plants to Draw in. Actually, if you keep this leaf inside, even uh, even uh, like after removing this leaf from the plant, if you keep this for some uh, days, still you can see some small plants are uh, like uh, starting from this leaf. So we used to put this inside. Uh, we used to put this inside the uh, books earlier days. To see that, and you can also try. Okay, here uh, assignment, uh, the small assignment. Assignment is basically, so here, that's what I said. So place a leaf of, uh, right, leaf of this acapana plant in between two blotting papers and keep it between pages of a book for a few days. Right, so what are these blotting papers? Blotting papers, you know, like, so to filter that, we are using these blotting papers, right? Filter some, uh, if you are, I'm not sure whether you are familiar with this. Sometimes to filter water, we are using these blotting papers. Blotting papers. Perahan Kardasi Kelakian. Right. 
this blotting paper we are using the filter. Right. Uh, this is this is the one. Well, this one is also a blotting paper. It looks like a tissue, but we have to say and purchase separately, right? Blood in paper, we have to get it separate. They are in, in you can see them in shops. That looks like a, looks like a tissue, but it's not a tissue. Even without the blood in papers, this will work. Even at work, we had no but it's better to put it in uh, between blood in paper. Then you have to keep it between the pages of a book for a few days. Can you find this plant? These plants are there in normally rocks. Yes, sir. Right. You can keep it uh, between the pages of a book for You can keep it like off. After a few days, you can observe. Right? Then, you can see some roots arising from the leaf margin, right? So they, they, there are some, so they are, they, they are called advantageous roots. Some leaves arising from the leaf, because this is isolated, it's not in the plant, but what it's trying? It's trying to, it's trying to reproduce. That is vegetative reproduction, it's trying to reproduce. That is why you can see some advantageous roots coming out from the plant leaf. Chuti mul level the no pay on pota the mul leaf. Right? Then you can cut this leaf into pieces, and using those pieces, you can you can give birth to new plants. Right? When you can see these roots, me mulla wat a pasi or kai kali kali wata kapala. That is the nature. And that is what called the vegetative reproduction. Right? You can test this. This is interesting. We used to do this in our childhood. I'm not sure whether you are enjoying that, but we enjoy that at that time. Okay. The last part of this lesson is about the flowers and seeds. Right? So here also we need to recognize, right? We need to recognize uh, the parts of the fruit, parts of the uh, flowers, parts of the flowers, and also uh, basically. So what is the main purpose of that? The main purpose is basically to give birth or produce fruits, and through these fruits, it is also doing a sexual reproduction. That is another main task of the flower. One task is producing foods. The other task is sexual reproduction. So we learn different kind of reproduction or propagation of the plants through roots, through stem, right? Stem, through stem, it is possible to create new plants. Through the using uh, these roots, it's produced with that fire uh, leaves and all. Through roots, it propagates. And this akapana like thing is propagates through the leaves. It can give birth to new plant. That's what a kolavalim puluam, kandem puluam, mulvalim puluam, atuvalim puluam. Branches can also be used to produce new plants. Various like decorative plants, you use branches, right? You use branches to create a new plant. So, this is a different thing. From that, version of the reproduction, this is a different thing. Actually, this fruit, this flower has male and female components. The flower has male and female components. So, using that, we will learn in the future chapters, maybe in grade uh, 8, 9, maybe in grade 9, we will learn. So, how this happens, but in this part, we don't have the process. We don't have how the process uh, process of reproduction we will not learn, but the thing is we will learn the parts of parts of the flower. Right. So basically, seeds inside the fruits 
produce new plants right these seeds are depressed by various methods actually they are they are dispersed they are this uh, they are sorry, they are dispersed dispersed by dispersed or spreaded by various methods so it can be used in the wind water and some are exploding have you seen the seeds exploding seeds yeah can pine you cone yes so pine cone yeah pine cone and some some other also that that uh, small one, uh, like uh, which produces a flower, what is that name? I cannot remember the name. Woodaloo. Yes, Woodaloo. Yeah. I cannot remember the English name. I was thinking, Begonia? No, no. Not that. So it, it used explosive algorithm, explosive mechanism to spread the seeds, right? When you touch that, it will explode. So what's the name? I cannot remember. Sorry. Mm. One thing of even the okay. Uh, anyway, so they that use and uh, even uh, rubber, so they use this explosive mechanism, right? So for the reproduction purpose. Okay, uh, I think it's balsamine, as I remember. So let's search it. Sorry. Yeah, 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 balsamine. That's it. can see in some videos. How seeds explode. This part, if you when you touch, see it, it will like explode and spread the seeds. That especially they are in this. So this is also our one of our hobbies in childhood. Then when we touch the it will explode and spread the seeds. It's Balsamina, yeah. That's it. That's the name. Right, okay. Then, so this is what I said. These flowers are having the male and female reproductive structures. Male and female reproductive structures. That is the speciality. Unlike the stem, unlike the trunk or stem, branches, leaves, and the root system where it helps to reproduce, this has Sexual organs, right? Sexual organs may be that is male and female reproductive structures. So that is what you can see in the plants. So let's identify different plants. And so actually, these uh, flowers are very, they are some are smelly, some are uh, not smelly, different sizes, different colors. These are most one of the most beautiful structures that you can see in the plant. <laughs> okay, let's see. This can be easily explored in a shoe flower because shoe flower is large enough and you can see these components very well. So you have to use a shoe flower and cut it to half, vertically cut it to half. And then you can see these components. Okay, let's learn them. What are these components? What are What is the process of them? We need to learn both. So what are these components? Also the process of them. So here you can see uh, sim similar to the petiole. Here you have pedicel. Right? So similar to the petiole in the leaf here, that is called pedicel. A similar name, right? Easy to remember. Right? Then the sepals and petals. Right? Sepals, petals. Sepals are basically green color. Right here, you can see sepals are green color. They are a single name, Manipatra. 
කොළ වගේ හැබැයි කොළක් නෙමෙයි මේ මලටම අයිති කෑල්ලක් sepals and the petals petals කියලා කියන්නේ ඇත්තම දලපත්ත right sepals petals you can see these are covered in basically inside the sepals so the ovary and ovals are there ovary is formed in the ovals ovary is basically we call in singular dimba kosha dimba kosha actually there is dimba ovary and ovals so that is inside so these are the female sexual components of the plant ovary and ovals so that is here is protected here and then so inside actually so here you have something called style style right style is not that style monster style they way style can a key layer right but you don't want to learn this singular word so you just remember the mm, english word that is enough then actually this is kind of a tunnel and this is kind of a it's a it's a pipe like thing right when this uh, <coughs> when something for when that small pollen is fallen fallen into this it will come through it will go through the style and then move to the ovary meka haraha mehena chuti chuti anchu wage dewal gihilla meka apulata yanna puluwan wenna thama hadala thiyena ettara me paraga kiyena ewa thama yanna meke so we but here we are not going to learn about that process now but we are going to learn about the okay then you have uh, something here interesting that is called stigma stigma and stamen right renu me renu wala tama tiyenne me monada paraga renu wala male renu wala tama tiyenne me chuti chuti e e paraga gihilla tama me mat ekka merge vela me mat ekka reproduce ve it will move inside and reproduce but it is here it is here then the stigma is here through the stigma and through the style it can move to the ovary so how it moves so what are the mechanism you can think and tell kohoma deva yana vatte athurata how it moves yes any idea what are the causes how it can move inside the ovary actually when it move inside the ovary you want a new uh, fruit will be created then the seeds will be generated so that is inside this but how this happens oh they can win by bees and butterflies yes they are helping so bees butterflies they are coming and they are they are attracted to the petals and the shape and the smell they so they come and they try to right they try to uh, like uh, absorb right they absorb uh, the like honey in the plant through the flower so they they are, they are organs basically they will touch the stem and stigma and these components so through them it can move inside and another thing is wind another is another thing is wind and also we can artificially do this we can use small brush and touch them and artificially do this some artificially do it some some farms right in some farms it is artificially done putimo api kena para para hagena na para para hagena kiyana kohomat wena eka kin ekak kene eka eka e nathath apita puluwan meka putimo meka we can just touch me maybe you see can small brush we can use a small brush touch it and then touch in the stigma it will move inside okay that is the process anyway so just remember the components process i can show you i think it's better to see the process also then it's easy to remember that let's show let me show you a video power cut ekak wuna danitta disconnect wuna ne okay it's okay i'll show you.
So let's see this video. contain both male and female reproductive parts. Such flowers are called bisexual flowers. For example, the just sorting. Only some flowers you can see both male and female uh, reproduction part. Here you can see uh, this. Uh, this is a whole thing is called carpal. The whole thing is called carpal and stamen. Right, stamen. We just discussed stamen and the carpal. Both can be seen here, China rose and pea. <laughs> Both can be seen, but some uh, plants are there. They have either this uh, stamen only or carpal only. Right? There are some plants like that. Here, corn. You can see. You can see uh, here they have shown examples corn like plants. It has separate male female components. Right? Here another one cucumber. Separate male female components. Okay, that is what I said, the pollen, pollen rain. So basically that is in the anther part. Filament is basically what hold in this uh, stamen, rain worker, other. That part is called the edge of the, edge of the uh, stamen is called anther. In that you can see pollen rain. Pollen rain is a small dust-like thing. It's very small, tiny particles. This part we have learned the stigma and also ovary and the style. Style is the pipe, ovary is the storage of ovaries. Okay, here you can see this is through wind, right? This is through wind. But it can happen uh, due to the insects also. It can happen due to insects also. And it's more into the stigma from the stamen, stigma. And then through the style, it's moving further down. Here it can happen due to water, it can happen due to wind, it can happen due to, uh, it can be due to insects or maybe human activities. Then can you see it's moving down to the styles and to the ovary and in the ovary it will meet female to mate and then the sexual reproduction begin and the zygote. Zygote is the 
one which is having both female and male. Actually, we also born such a way. Right, it will slowly develop in the embryo, then the seed, and it will be converted to the fruit. Okay, this is what happened because when you know the process, it's very, very easy to remember the components, and that is why I showed this. So that is at the end of this. Okay, now you know about the seeds, how seeds created and how right, what is what are the seeds and how fruits are created, you know. A little about that. No need to remember, but just remember the parts. Right. Okay. So anyway, you can see sepals, petals, and this either this uh, like a uh, gynoecium or androsium you can see or both gynoecium is the female genitals or this uh, androsium is the male part or both can be there in a flower so these are the mandatory components you can see the sepals petals both of these or one of these is present in the Okay, then actually we this part we have already learned. What are the sepals? Sepals are gener generally in the green color, maybe dark or green color or sometimes white even. Main is to protect the flower buds. So when flowers are small, this will be protected. The petals, these are colored. Basically, they attract insects. So that is the attraction part, the beautiful, colorful uh, petals will attract uh, insects, especially for the pollination part. And androsium is basically male part, as I said here, the male part that is compound, com like that is created with the antha and the filament, right? That is stamen, right? Basically, stamen is with antha and the filament. In the antha, you can see the pollens, right? All these things we have so we saw that in the video. Right? Basically, the production of pollen is the task of the embryosium. Then you have the gynosium. Gynosium is basically compound with stigma, style, and ovary. Ovary will be converted to the fruit, and ovulus will be converted to the seeds. Ultimately, stigma is to capture the pollens, and style is to move the pollens to bottom. Right, that is the guy. Uh, actually, this uh, basically the idea is to produce the seeds. Ultimate aim is to produce seeds. Okay, then actually we need to learn about our last part. Our frames are missing due to maybe power cut or some reason. Let's keep this part for them. I wanted to discuss this as well because it's a very small part. But uh, anyway, let's keep it for them. It's a very very small part. We can do that. Uh, and start and also when you come the next day please complete the exercise because we have almost discussed everything please complete the exercise and come okay. this one that is in the page number 20 please complete it that and come then it is easy to finish the lesson okay then good night okay sir thank you sir good night